Hi, well, let's go ahead and get started. Um, it is right at the top of the hour. So I just wanna welcome every, everyone to um, our first Detect to Protect webinar. So this is a new series for uh, Stamus Networks. So we'll be holding these um, each month. And so we're really, um, the goal of these is to help security teams learn how to better protect their networks from unknown threats. And my name is Kim Schofield. I'll be hosting the webinar this morning and managing questions at the conclusion uh, of the call. So we also have a few poll questions that we're gonna be asking during the webinar and we would love your feedback on those. Um, today's session is presented by Phil Owens. Uh, he's our Vice President of Customer Solutions. And then uh, finally, just a reminder that our webinar is being recorded and we will send you a link to the video and the audio and also the, the uh, slides, as well as a white paper download at the um, at later this week, probably by tomorrow. And then uh, lastly, if you have any questions during the webinar, uh, we please would ask that you wait until the end of our presentation, and then you can type them into the chat or Q&A window. All right, and with that, I'm gonna go ahead and hand the microphone over to Phil. Thank you, Kim. Uh, and thanks everyone for uh, taking a little bit of time out of their day to listen to me uh, speak about the uh, 12 signs. It's time to upgrade your legacy IDS IPS. Um, using intrusion detection and prevention systems uh, IDS, IPS, IDPS, uh, to monitor enterprise networks for attacks and suspicious activity is a widely deployed approach and widely disliked. Um, the, uh, the output of a legacy IDS, IPS alerts are widely ignored, mainly because of the so-called alert cannon or machine gun, if you will, with all of the alerts that are firing. There are legitimate reasons to totally dislike uh, an IDS IPS, including the overwhelming uh, volume of alerts, limiting information um, that, that are contained in those alerts, as well as the inability to detect today's sophisticated threats. Um, during this webinar, I will uh, uh, review some of these shortcomings of the uh, IDS IPS systems and provide an outline for determining when's the best time to actually do an upgrade. Questions addressed during this session uh, will include, when is it time, the right time to do an upgrade? Uh, what criteria should we use to evaluate solutions? Uh, what are realistic goals when migrating to a modern IDS IPS alternative? Um, when uh, deciding to upgrade uh, your legacy IDS IPS, uh, it is critical to evaluate your motivations and consider migrating from your legacy IDS. Uh, but before I actually get into that top 12 uh, signs, I want to talk a little bit about Stamus Networks. So Stamus Networks is a global provider of high performance network-based threat detection and response systems that, that help your security teams know more, respond sooner and mitigate risk with insights gathered from cloud and on-premise network activity. Our Stamus Network Security Platform combines the best of intrusion detection systems, network security monitoring, or NSM, and network detection and response, or the NDR, as they are today, uh, into a single solution that exposes serious and imminent threats to critical assets and empowers a response. I do want to point out that our team has been working with uh, one of the leading open source uh, IDS solutions, Sericata, um, since its inception and has been involved in its transformation from an alert driven IDS to a full blown NSM, um, NSM and IDS capabilities. So we have three people on our team that are actively involved with uh, doing the coding, QA and management, um, as well as Sericata project between them. Stamus Networks has provided more code than any other organization in the world. Um, what we will be talking about is the Stamus security platform uh, a little bit here, uh, just to give you an idea. And analysts have been telling us for years that IDS is dead because you are here is proof that that's not entirely true. The Stamus security platform takes a legacy IDS and enhances it through NSM and NDR capability at the top. So what I want to point out is, you know, with the with this transformation or this enhancement, we're moving from your standard IDS 
um, and legacy IDS, which is just alert based with not a whole lot of data around it, moving up that ladder, adding NSM capabilities. So all of the data that you would you would think of um, from an NSM solution, uh, some of you out there might be using something like uh, Zeek to, to get data. And what, what I wanna say is that some of these IDSs, especially Sericata has added a lot of that data uh, to the actual alerts to be able to uh, f find your data, find your alerts and um, handle more critical threats all the way up to your standard NDR solution that you can think of, which is um, adding machine learning and detection of these critical assets um, with, with that in mind. All right, so from here, what I wanna do is start to our new poll, our first poll. So uh, Kim, if you wanna give that a go. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and launch that. So you should see that up on your screen. And I see some answers coming in. Thank you, we'll give it maybe 30 seconds to let folks respond. And then we will end the poll and we want to be able to see the results. All right, if that looks good, let's go ahead and end the poll. And we'll share those results. Excellent. And then, uh, Phil, you let me know when, when you're all set and I'll stop sharing. Uh, all right, so does the organization uh, recently use an IDS IPS? And basically 83% uh, um, of the folks on the poll said, yes, they, they absolutely do. Uh, and one said yes, but they're not sure which one, right? So uh, excellent. So that's basically 100% of the poll uh, says yes, they are currently using a, uh, an, a standalone IDS. All right, uh, so let's get to the actual meat of this, and that is the 12 reasons that you might upgrade from a legacy IDS to a, um, to a more modern uh, IDS alternative. So uh, this one's pretty self-explanatory. Number 12, license renewal time is coming up. So uh, you may have had a one-year or three or five-year uh, contract with your current IDS provider, and from there, um, you, you would like to see just what else is out there and do we actually have uh, something that, that's better than what we're currently using. Uh, a lot of these uh, um, legacy IDSs, as we've been talking about for a little while, uh, they generate a lot of alerts and we'll talk about that here in just a minute. But the, um, the key is, can I get more data out of it and actually get more usability from an IDS, from a more modern IDS? Number 11. End of life. So your current IDS and ID, IPS has reached its end of life. Maybe it's built into your firewall and your firewall vendor is no longer supporting some of the functionality. Uh, you may have already created rules for it, which means that uh, you're gonna need to migrate anyway to something new uh, because of this end of life from your current provider. Uh, number 10 uh, kind of leads kind of comes right from that, uh, that end of life, because if there is an end of life, there may also be a forced upgrade. Uh, think of this as like forcing, your, forcing you from moving from um, one, one IDS to another, similar to say a snort two to a snort three, very, very different um, type of uh, environment and making all of your rules obsolete, causing a migration instead of, and starting from new, instead of actually just an upgrade of your current solution. Uh, so uh, making a move from one, one platform to another uh, could be um, of interest. All right, number nine. Uh, need to make sure the IDS fits into your stack. Um, so tech stack update. You want to, uh, to, you might be changing or adding a SOAR or a SIM to the environment and just need to make sure that the modern IDS will have an extensive API capability and high quality alerting engine uh, to be able to get the data that you need into those, um, those new tech stack pieces, right? So um, a SOAR, your, your IDS can kick trigger alerts. Maybe those alerts are 
um, are in such a way that you can you can run a playbook? Can it kick off the playbook in your SOAR? Can it actually um, send all the data into the SIM that you need and allow you to get that evidence that's required when, when investigating an incident? So uh, also being able to uh, create incidents for incident response within, within a tool of your choice, maybe uh, something like a Hive uh, platform or a, um, a ServiceNow, for instance. All right, and this brings us to our second poll. Uh, why are you considering replacing your IDS IPS? All right, we're going to go ahead and launch that. And we'll give everyone about 30 seconds. All right. All answers in, so we'll go ahead and share those results. It uh, looks like uh, the number one, they're not currently considering, but uh, we have kind of a tie between too many alerts and does not provide value. So that's uh, those are a couple of interesting uh, ones. And we, we do know that uh, too many alerts is sometimes uh, a big problem with alert fatigue. So um, I'll move on to number eight on our list, which is negative ROI. The cost of maintaining the leg legacy IDS IP IPS has exceeded its value to the organization. Um, you know, maybe you're currently running an open source IDS um, uh, and it's not centrally managed. Uh, and the IDS sensors are just, you know, hard to keep up to date. It takes a lot of man hours to, uh, to cr create an infrastructure of legacy, of legacy IDSs that are um, based around just plain open source with no no central management. Uh, also, custom deployments that you that may have been built. We've heard from some customers that that those custom deployments have gotten to a point where uh, finding expertise to actually run those deployments in a large environment is becoming much, much, much more difficult to, to do. And as, uh, as people are leaving the organization, understanding what's going on in the custom environment becomes much harder as well. So um, that, that's where we are from a, from a negative uh, return on investment within, uh, uh, within the IDS realm. Now, number seven, alert fatigue. So this is one that's talked about all the time. And, um, you know, maybe I, I I might have put this at number one because this is the one thing that everyone says uh, an IDS will give me tons of alerts, right? Um, and most people call this uh, an alert cannon. I would uh, I would reference this uh, as a as a machine gun, right? So uh, what this is, is these alerts could actually be um, uh, just telling you information that that are good for evidentiary purposes, but not necessarily to alert and kick off a SOAR playbook. So uh, a modern IDS, hopefully, like the Stamus, Central, uh, the Stamus Security Platform, uh, can actually whittle all of that information down to some serious and imminent threats. And those are the ones that are actually <clears throat> utilized from, a, from a, um, an alert perspective. So I like, to, I like to actually, instead of calling them IDS alerts, because I do think it's kind of a misnomer to calling them IDS events. Uh, mm. And then the data that's around those events um, in a lot of legacy IDS requires you to do investigations and correlations uh, with other data in order to figure out what is actually going on. Um, so alert fatigue, probably the number one reason that a lot of people hate their IDS and makes them want to look for some alternatives when their contracts are coming up. So uh, another one is to consolidate functions. So a lot of folks will use their, their IDS to generate alerts and then have to correlate that data with, um, with other alternatives, right? So um, with, with an NSM, for instance, we have a lot of folks out there that especially in the open source realm that are running both Sericata and Zeek. However, as, as Sericata has evolved, a lot of the data that can be provided by, by an NSM 
is already provided by the Sericata IDS and, and by the Stamus security platform. So you can actually combine these two um, solutions into a single, a single um, solution. And from there, we can actually, instead of having to do a lot of correlation um, with the Sericata engine, a lot of that NSM data is pre-correlated with the alert to help you understand and get more evidentiary information out of just a single alert. Also, um, all of the data is captured even if an alert's not fired. So if you're digging into something, want to know all the flow information or, or HTTP information or any of those protocol um, transactions, all of those available in a single solution, single platform, and in the case of the Stama security platform, also in a single um, single engine to be able to generate all of that data for you, which al allows for um, uh, some added added scalability capabilities, which is one of the um, one of the items that we'll talk about here in just a second. Number five, the shift to the cloud uh, because of the pandemic um, made organizations really shift, right? Uh, much faster than a lot of people actually expected. So they're moving to cloud infrastructure a lot more. Um, now's the time to check, does the current IDS, can you deploy in a cloud environment and still get the visibility um, that you're expecting, right? So uh, really, is, the, is there a way to get all of the data? If it's in my firewall, uh, then I'm not going to be able to move that firewall into the cloud if I'm using the IDS capabilities there. However, if I'm using a standalone IDS, uh, there is that possibility, but got to make, make sure that that's actually uh, key. Uh, I am going to do a tech check. Uh, Kim, can you tell me, are you still seeing me? I You're am still, still seeing me? you. Yes, and I am. And hearing me. Okay, because yes. I just showed up again on the... Uh, <laughs> on the uh, list, so I want to make sure. Yep. All right. So, and this is a good segue for our third and I believe final audience poll. Uh, when do you plan to replace? Um, so let's see what people have to say. A poll is launched. <clears throat> and we'll, we'll give everyone a little bit of time to answer those questions. A few holdouts. <laughs> All right. Well, I think we have about half uh, that have responded, but we'll go ahead and, and end that. Okay. And share those results. Uh, so most everybody says uh, within the next year, um, is when they'll be uh, expecting to, for those that are actually going to replace, um, they're, they're gonna be doing it within the next year, so cool. All right, so we were on five, let's move, in, move on to number four, uh, performance limitations. Um, so as, as uh, customers grow, they obviously are, um, are growing their throughput and a uh, lot of legacy I, IDSs, um, as throughput evolves, you need to actually add um, either either reduce the number of, of um, signatures that can fire within that IDS, or you need to add multiples, uh, multiple connections and find ways to distribute that data uh, to them. Uh, so the whole idea of a modern IDS is to be able to handle the 80 or 90,000 rules that might be in a rule set and be able to do that at 40 to 100 gigabits per second uh, and be able to match millions of IOCs there as well. So um, you want to make sure that the new IDS can actually cover the speeds and, and speeds need that you have um, as you grow. Uh, like like I had mentioned, a lot of lot of IDSs, it turns out to be a trade off. I know that uh, when I first got into the business, creating an IDS um, that could handle, you know, even ten gigabits 
uh, questions would come in, okay, well, which rules do I need to turn, can I turn off in order to be able to maintain this uh, type of speed and be able to still get the visibility that I would like. And with the modern IDS and with the Stamus security platform, uh, being able to process millions of IOC matches, um, as well as thousands, tens of thousands of signatures at 40 to 100 gigabits per second uh, is something that uh, really, really what drew me to Stamus Networks and the team here because of, of how they've been able to uh, accomplish that. Um, number three, maybe you're reacting to a breach and you need uh, improved security controls and monitoring. A lot of IDSs only show you the event or alert, right? And they don't have the evidence around it, meaning that you have to spend more time um, trying to figure out what is all the evidence um, around this breach? How can I find all of that data? Um, a modern IDS alternative can actually give you that added visibility by, by pre-correlating a lot of that evidence into those alerts. Uh, so that's where um, you get, the, get this added visibility of the evidence as well as uh, transparency of all of the data. So understanding what alert fired. Uh, if you're relying entirely on, on machine learning, for instance, uh, with an NDR, it may be a black box and you'll say it will tell you this happened, but not a lot of evidence around it. Or you're just getting the alert from the IDS and it's saying this happened, but not a whole lot of evidence around it. So having total visibility and transparency on, on the data that's, that's happening from an NSM perspective is critical and helps speed, um, speed your uh, mean time to detect and mean time to resolution. Uh, also, you'll want an IDS that does full um, deep packet inspection and not one that's going to ent entirely rely on flow records. Uh, so some, some IDSs are only generating flow and then creating their alerts based off of that flow data, which is not all of the information that is required in order to have a good, concise um, type of, of good, good, concise piece of information to trigger alerts on and causing more alerts to fire and false positives to happen than what you might, no might normally see with a full deep packet inspection tool. Uh, I talked about this in the last slide, accelerating your response. So um, if you're working with just flow records uh, and you get an IDS event and, and you're missing a lot of potential evidence, right? Uh, so this goes back to that visibility. So make sure that your, your solution can do DPI and parse all the major protocols. Um, this, this will allow you to get the, the visibility from that data correlated together all within that IDS event. Also with the right tool, uh, it can help you drill down to the most serious and imminent threats so you can focus on what's most important to you and your organization to actually accelerate your response um, also accelerate your detect, right? Which is, which is key, because if you can detect it faster, you can respond faster and keep from getting, uh, getting caught up in a possible breach. And then finally, and easily, uh, we can realize that an up upgrade is possible. Uh, you have uh, concluded that a modern IDS uh, IPS um, alternative is available and the technology can deliver better results at a lower cost of ownership. So um, after all these reasons, right, we know these exist. Uh, being able to uh, use full APIs to capture evidence within a SOAR or kick off a playbook in a SOAR with, your, with a newer tech stack, plus deliver data into a SIM or a data lake for correlation with other tools such as an EDR. Um, these, these new tools like the one from, from uh, Stamus, uh, the Stamus security platform can also replace a network security monitor or network traffic analysis tool, as well as um, help you make that shift to a full NDR utilizing the data that is being collected. So there is no need for three different tools. So um, this would be the number one. So I'm gonna finish off there by just a couple of uh, follow-up slides. Uh, I will mention that all attendees will receive um, 
from Stamets, a practical guide for migrating from legacy intrusion detection systems to a modern alternative. Uh, and finally, some additional resources that are actually available to you. We do have a white paper for five essential requirements for, a, for an NDR. Um, also a data sheet on the Stamus security platform if you're interested. And we have actually, uh, I like to say, written the book on Sericata. So the Security Analyst Guide to Sericata written by Eric LeBlanc and Peter Maniv, uh, two folks to, who, are, who have been with the Sericata project since its inception. From there, I'm gonna turn it over to Kim to kind of give me any Q and A that are coming in. So if you've been saving up any questions and answer, Q questions, I should say, I will answer. You're, you're not gonna answer, but I will answer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, awesome. Thanks so much, Phil. Um, so I did have a kind of a housekeeping question come in about slides being available. Um, and so, yes, uh, we will send an email out. <clears throat> Excuse me, let's go out tomorrow. Uh, that'll include the recording, um, the audio, the video portion of it as well. And you'll also be able to see the slides and we'll have a link to uh, a white paper download. So um, that was just wanted to go ahead and answer that. And so I do have a couple of other questions, um, but if you do have something you'd like to ask, again, just a reminder to type that into the Q&A. Um, you can find that down at the bottom of your uh, Zoom screen. Uh, so <clears throat> I have, I can see some of these came in as you were talking about some of these topics, uh, Phil. One of them, uh, when you talked about alert fatigue, um, or just, uh, I think you called it something else, just a, about how those uh, notices come in and, and they're frequent. Um, and that can mm -hmm. be a little bit overwhelming, maybe not always they can end up being ignored. But uh, the question was, how can you, um, you know, how does an IDS alternative uh, really help out with that? What, what would the change be if you use something else? Yeah, so a good modern IDS alternative that, uh, that, uh, that we have, like the Stamus security platform, can take a lot of those alerts that, that are happening and use those as evidence and aggregate that data together. So you're not sifting through the millions uh, of IDS alerts. And, and again, I wanna go back to the fact that I hate that, that the IDS world has been calling these things alerts for so many years. Uh, maybe back when they initially, um, they, were, they were initially used, they were alerts. But now a lot of times these things are, you know, in pieces of information, something you might wanna look at. Um, maybe only informational, um, maybe it's a policy violation, not an actual threat. So to be able to come up with what that actual threat is, um, is, um, is very, very difficult in a legacy IDS. So the modern IDS is um, hopefully can help aggregate a lot of those serious and imminent threats into a single threat action and be able to allow you to um, make decisions and move forward based off of that that um, that piece of information alone. Uh, not to say that all of those uh, all of those alerts or events are are not available. Just the fact that um, aggregating them together to, so that you're not sifting through the millions and and billions of uh, of events that that might be coming into your network. Uh, you're just getting you know, maybe a handful of threats that are actually uh, um, things that you need to look at. Okay. Okay, great. Um, so another question that came in, I think this is a good one. So would a content-based IDS um, be completely replaced? IDS or an IPS, would that be completely replaced? Uh, no, I don't think so. So um, the the bottom line here is we we are moving into NDR with our Stamus security platform uh, right from uh, the IDS content, right? So uh, you will still see and, and be able to utilize IDS content. There are certain threats that are best actually caught by a signature or a rule and that machine learning may not be able to, to see it. The other thing is, by adding machine learning capabilities and things, you can see more anomalous type of action uh, that's taking place. So um, not all vulnerabilities can just be um, handled by anomalous traffic and, and machine learning. And the reason I say that is a lot of the threat actors are actually utilizing tools that may be used within your organization already in order to get their stronghold and make their moves laterally within the 
within the network where it just doesn't cause an anomaly within the network because it's already it's already being seen. So yes, content-based, rule-based type of IDS IPS is just putting the right tool to catch the right bad guy, right? So I think all of them will still be um, still be part of the play. Right. Yeah, that that's an excellent question. So uh, thank you for that. Thanks, Phil. Um, I do have another one about uh, you talked about how a lot of um, people are are moving uh, to the cloud. And so are there specific IDS IPS products designed for use in the cloud? Uh, yeah, what, what I will tell you is that most of the cloud providers have realized that uh, what is necessary is to allow their, their customers to have access to the data streams between their, their, um, their server infrastructure in the cloud. So AWS, um, um, Google Cloud Platform, Azure, and others, some of them have already given you um, access to be able to grab that data and maybe do deep packet inspection on it. So the question becomes, um, can the IDS IPS that you're choosing, the modern one, actually be deployed there? And I will tell you that the Stamus security platform, both the central server where everything is located can be deployed there, as well as uh, probes. Now, the nice thing is, is those probes are basically exactly the same as the probes that you would deploy on premise. And, and the good thing there is all the management would happen at the central server, which allows for a hybrid approach uh, for those folks that still have data centers and still need an on-prem um, on solution and be able to deploy in the cloud uh, and still manage all of that data as well. And even put all of those pieces, all that, all that data into a single uh, environment. So um, yeah, just making sure that, uh, that the, the information or the, uh, the IDS that you're choosing is cloud ready. Like I'd mentioned before, in some cases, if you're using hardware firewalls, um, it might be difficult for those to actually be deployed in a cloud environment, so. Great. Um, so it looks like I have one more question, um, and then we'll give folks, if, you know, uh, while you answer this, Phil, you know, another minute or so, if anybody has anything else. But our final question right now is, can you expand a little bit more on what you meant by negative ROI? Yeah, so the um, the negative ROI uh, that that we were talking about is just the fact that as you grow and you're building out your your um, network infrastructure, you're also going to be building out your network security and network detection infrastructure. And if your current environment is built around, uh, possibly built around open source environment, um, that becomes harder and harder for you to manage. Uh, and in certain cases, you're building custom tools in order to be able to manage um, anywhere between, you know, maybe 10 um, Sericata or Snort sensors, uh, all the way up to a couple of hundred. Uh, we have talked with a customer who's doing something very similar to that. And one of the reasons they came to us was just this very reason. Um, it has become unwieldy for them to be able to manage their current environment as they grow. And then with the high volumes and being able to scale everything, um, having a solution that's supportable uh, is and, and doesn't require expert skills, as well as the information being passed on as you're building out a custom, a custom environment, all of that information you need to make sure is being passed on from one, one, um, one employee to the next as, as people move on and you know, still understand what the network is going to look like. So um, the amount of time for incident investigation that's spent based off of just a whole bunch of alerts and, and not, uh, not really worrying about those serious and imminent threats. So mean time to response um, gets larger uh, as you're adding more infrastructure to the, uh, to the, um, to, to, to your network detection and response. So. All right. All right. All right. Anyone else? I haven't had any other questions come in. Uh, so we just want to thank everyone for joining us today. I uh, really appreciate you taking the time uh, to be with us and just keep an eye out in your uh, email inbox for the recording and that white paper download. All right, Bill, thank you so much. Thank you. It was All right. thank you. Thank you for spending a little time with me today.
Thanks so much. Take care. Thank you.